You've been waiting for this moment all expansion, and now RMP finally got some real nerfs. But will they matter, or did the whole community just get jebated? And wait a second, if RMP is gutted, then who will take the crown as the kings of arena? Today we answer all of your questions as we predict the meta for Shadowlands Season 4. And just a reminder, Skillcap.com offers a rating gain guarantee while actively using our website. So get ahead of the competition this season and visit the link below for discount code and start your PvP journey today. First up, let's go over the biggest changes to melee DPS. After devastating the ladder in Season 3, Unholy DKs have been hit with some significant nerfs. Both Abomination Limb and Spell Warden had their effects reduced inside of PvP, which is why we are moving Unholy down half a tier. Abomination Limb itself wasn't nerfed, but instead the Brutal Grasp Conduit, which will now be 50% less effective in Arena. As we all know, Abom Limb is one of the most threatening offensive cooldowns in Shadowlands and has been the backbone of kill setups all expansion. It will still be a scary cooldown, but won't be as overtuned thanks to this change. The nerf to Spell Warden will also be impactful, as it was a huge burden for caster DPS and was a huge reason DKs were doing so well into magic damage. The casting speed debuff it applies stacks with other things like Curse of Tongues and Numbing Poison, which is why DK Rogue and Demo DK might have felt so brutal to play against in Season 3. So with nerfs to two of their key mechanics, we are fairly confident that Unholy DK will fall off slightly as a dominant melee DPS. And speaking of dominant melee, all three Rogue specs saw some changes, but let's dive in one by one. First up though, some context. Both Fire Mage and Holy Priest got nerfed, which, you guessed it, was an indirect nerf to Subtlety Rogue. The icing on the cake was a reduction to Eviscerate damage and an obscure nerf to the Deeper Daggers Conduit, which was unintentionally buffing damage done by Resonator. So with Burst Damage nerfed for Sub and with looming nerfs to both Fire Mage and Holy Priest, we are dropping Subtlety down half a tier for Season 4. Outlaw also saw an indirect nerf with a change to the Invigorating Shadow Dust Legendary, which will hurt slightly with overall cooldown reduction. Now, before you jump out of your chair in excitement, we fully expect Outlaw to stay on the S tier. This change was just a superficial nerf at best, which can be completely avoided by simply playing the more offensive Green Skin Legendary. So yeah, not much is changing in regards to Outlaw, and they will still be the best melee by a small margin. Finally, there was a nerf to the infamous Assassination Rogue one-shot build, thanks to a reduction to the Septic Shock Conduit. Overall, not much to say here, and it's probably a good thing for the game overall, as we all know how frustrating it has been to play against the gimmicky one-shot build. This really won't change the strength of Assassination, though, as this nerf can be completely avoided by simply changing over to Necrolord. No big deal. Moving on, we have some changes to Ret Paladins. Many of their builder spells received some damage buffs, while both Avenging Wrath and Crusade got some slight nerfs. So, what does this mean? Well, simply put, it will make their cooldown damage slightly less threatening, while helping them maintain better pressure while Wings is on cooldown. Overall, we think these changes won't really affect much, but with nerfs to sub RMP, Ret might be in a much better place overall in Season 4. Finally, we have Survival Hunters, who saw some tuning centered around Mythic Dungeons. A few of their single target spells got fairly substantial damage buffs, which was offset by a nerf to their tier set AoE damage. Once again, these were entirely MDI based changes, aimed at tilting their damage profile more towards single target DPS. Survival Hunter was already on the cusp of being a high tier melee, and this might just put them in line with Fury Warriors, but we're waiting to see how the meta plays out before we jump to conclusions. And with that, we have our melee meta predictions. Overall, not much has changed except for Sub and Unholy dropping down half a tier. There were some slight nerfs to both Windwalker Monks and Demon Hunters that we didn't cover, but they were so minor that we don't expect much to change on that end. Keep your eyes on Survival Hunter. They were already doing huge damage, and with their PvE buffs, they might wind up ranking higher than we have projected. But with melee out of the way, it's time to predict the ranged meta for Season 4. First up, the class on everyone's radar, Mage. Let's start with the heavy hitter. Fire got nerfed. Well, actually, just a small part of it got nerfed, with the free barrier granted by Blazing Soul having its effect reduced by 50% in PvP. While this will hurt their survivability slightly, we fully expect Fire Mage to still be on the higher end of ranged DPS. After all, Blink will still have an insanely short cooldown thanks to conduits, and a free barrier is a free barrier, even at 50% effectiveness. Just like other changes we covered, this nerf can simply be avoided by changing talents. Of course, not every mage will be happy playing Shimmer again, but it could become the default talent pick once again in the Season 4 meta. Even though sub RMP will be weaker, fire by itself remains mostly intact and could easily slot itself into alternative comps, which is why we are keeping it on the S tier for another season. 
Even though Fire was a clear loser, Frost is arguably one of the biggest winners from Season 4 tuning, and we are moving it up half a tier. Both Ice Lands and Frozen Orbs saw damage increases, and even though Deathborn took a slight hit, Encanter's Flow was actually buffed in PvP, which is a big deal since it is their primary talent. Overall, these buffs were really important to Frost Mage, specifically to Wizard Cleaves, where Frozen Orb and Encanter's Flow tend to get the most value. Moving on, we have another clear winner from Season 4 tuning, with Affliction Warlocks also moving up half a tier since our last update. This comes on the back of a few key damage increases, most notably Corruption, which is getting its damage buffed by a whopping 30%. UA also got two separate buffs, which together were offset slightly with a nerf to Dark Soul. Overall, this seems to be what most Affliction Warlocks have been wanting. More consistent pressure, less reliance on cooldowns. And with key nerfs to RMP and a small nerf to Ret Paladin cleave damage, Affliction seems to be better suited for Arena this season. And much like Survival Hunter, Destro saw some obscure changes thanks to Mythic Dungeon tuning. Really, there isn't much to say here. The damage increases to Incinerate only matter as Necrolord with the Decimating Bolt Legendary. Overall though, Destro will likely be in the same place as last season, and might continue having problems with getting cleaved down by melee. And although it's not really worth mentioning, Demo got the most unusual nerf imaginable, with a cooldown increase to one of its interrupts. We don't know why this was the nerf Blizzard decided to take, and honestly it doesn't seem like it will change much. We fully predict Demo will continue its reign of terror in the 3's meta going into Season 4. Finally, we have a spec that didn't get any changes, but is one we predict will become stronger this season. It's Elemental Shaman, and we are making a risky decision to place it on the S tier with Demo and Fire. Not to spoil too much, but the creme de la creme of Season 4 tuning is a nerf to Holy Priest, which of course is a nerf to RMP and a passive buff to other healers. Since Elemental typically plays with either Resto Druids, Mistweaver Monks, or even Holy Paladins, it will technically be in a better position compared to last season, where it was already on the cusp of being the highest tier. And with that, we have our prediction of the ranged meta in Season 4. To nobody's surprise, Demo will continue to be a god of Arena, but will be met with some new challengers, specifically Elemental Shaman, Frost Mage, and Affliction Warlock. There were some superficial AoE damage buffs to Balance Druid and Shadow Priest, and a minor buff to Arcane Mage damage, but they were a drop in the bucket and didn't really address the core issues those specs face. And now we finish off with healers, with possibly the biggest meta shift coming this season. If you've been licking your lips for Holy Priest nerfs, they're finally here, and we're making the bold decision to drop them down half a tier to join both Holy Paladins and Resto Druids. So what happened? For one, Greater Fade will now have a 60 second cooldown. This is a big deal, since this single ability was a huge part of Holy Priest's success, being incredibly difficult to both CC and kill due to its incredibly efficient cooldown. Secondly, there were a few key nerfs to both heal and flash heal, both by themselves and also with the tier set bonus that increases their healing. All in all, this means that priest healing will be substantially weaker, since it relies heavily on modifiers that proc once Serenity gets used. With their survivability and throughput nerfed, we are fairly confident in saying Holy Priest will drop down half a tier, especially considering both Rogues and Fire Mages also got hit with some nerfs. Overall, these changes to Holy Priest will likely be the biggest meta shifter in Season 4, and will be felt the hardest in 2v2, where Holy Priest healing might now take an extra hit due to higher levels of dampening. Enough of Holy Priest though, some of you might be pointing at the Mistweaver and Resto Shaman buffs and wondering if they will change the meta, and the answer to that is no. Look, it's perfectly fine the Mistweaver got a damage increase, it definitely needed one, but this isn't Legion and monks aren't really designed to fistweave, or whatever people call it. In fact, pushing into the enemy team to deal damage is generally not recommended, as that is a surefire way to end up in a long CC chain just to hit the opponent like a wet noodle. And as far as the rest of Shaman change is concerned, yes, it is a buff, but a minor one at that. There is really not much to say here. Resto Shamans have struggled with healing more than any other class, and a single buff to their 4 set likely won't address this issue. And with that, we have a complete picture of the healing meta. Wow, would you look at that, only two tiers. We are finally getting close to true healer balance. Look, the elephant in the room during Season 3 was clearly Holy Priest, there is no debate about that. Holy was so disproportionately strong that it made it difficult to truly assess healer balance in a vacuum. After its nerfs, it might become more clear where the rest of healer imbalances remain, and we fully expect more representation from other specs, specifically Disc Priests and Resto Druids for the remainder of the expansion. But we want to know what you think. How do you think the meta will shape up next season? Are you happy with these changes? Let us know in the comments below. And if you're wanting to stay ahead of the meta, head over to skillcap.com. There you will find over 600 class guides and a thousand arena commentaries. Together, that's an average of 24 hours of instructional videos per class, and for only $4.99 a month, that's a massive value. 
If that wasn't enough, we offer a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while actively using our website. And with special members-only access to our Discord, you can get on-demand help from pro players. So what are you waiting for? Join a community of over half a million lifetime users at skillcap.com. Discount link below. All right, everyone, that wraps it up. Just a reminder, we try and balance the opinions of multiple rank one and professional players when making these tier lists, and that obviously means there's some disagreement. Of course, this is just a prediction, and we will be updating you as things change. In any case, though, we hope you found this as a useful meta guide. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.